Hi, it's Shani with Wild at Heart. This is step-by-step -step instructions on welcoming a shy cat into your home. But this can also be used for any time your cat experiences something stressful. Maybe you just moved or maybe your cat experienced a traumatic event. These steps will also be helpful. But first I wanted to just say thank you so much for choosing a shy cat. As someone who works at a shelter, I see shy cats overlooked over and over again, and then they end up languishing in shelters for months. You cannot judge any animal in the shelter environment as it's just inherently stressful. Shy cats are literally some of the most loving and loyal kitties you can choose. The shy ones are sensitive and kind. They deserve to be loved and cherished. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for saving a shy cat. Okay, so let's start the video. This is gonna be a longer video, but I promise you that the results are gonna be amazing and your relationship with your cat is gonna be very harmonious. So step one is setting up your safe room. Now, you wanna choose a room that is relatively quiet and doesn't have a bunch of people going in and out of it. The room should include everything that your cat needs. So a litter box with unscented clay litter, food and water placed as far away as possible from the litter box, an assortment of toys, scratchers, a cat tree, treats, music, or maybe a TV, and hopefully a nice kitty water fountain. There are two super important details. One is you need to cover inappropriate hide places, and the next is to provide appropriate hide places. An inappropriate hiding place for a cat is anywhere the cat can go where you won't have access to them in order to properly socialize them. So inside under a bunch of junk, inside a cramped closet, under a bed, or even inside the box spring, under a cabinet, or inside a chair. Please, please be very careful with any mechanical chairs like recliners as cats can climb way up in them and suffer extreme injuries. When you are setting up your safe room, block or remove these inappropriate hide places. Please remember that cats can flatten their bodies and get into places you wouldn't even be able to imagine. So if you see a spot that you might think a cat could fit into, they probably can, so I would block it. Now even more important is you have to provide appropriate hide places for your cat. The hide spots should be fully enclosed. So for example, just an empty box is not gonna cut it and it's not gonna provide the safety the cat needs. You can use a cat cave, a cat carrier, just remove the door and cover the entire carrier with a pillowcase or towel. There are so many various hide boxes as well as perfect hiding spots in cat trees and maybe even a tunnel. I did want to mention that under a bed can be an okay hiding spot as long as you can get under there without completely freaking the cat out. One little tip that has been so life-changing for the cats at my shelter is we cover the entire cat tree with a sheet or blanket. I can't express how vital tall cat trees are for cats. Cats see their world vertically and cats who have the opportunity to get up high feel more confident. They feel bigger, and that's what we want for shy cats. We want them to feel confident. Some people get really bummed when their cat hides, but I'm telling you right now, hiding for cats is completely normal, and we actually wanna encourage it. We never want to prevent a cat from hiding. Some think by forcing the cat out into the open, you will speed up the socialization process. You will not. You will only show your new cat that you are someone to fear and that your home is not safe. So you must provide all cats, whether they are shy or completely comfortable with appropriate hide places. Now here are some examples of some scratchers that have been really effective with the cats that I've worked with. It's good to have a variety as every cat is different. Some cats prefer upright scratchers, while some prefer horizontal ones. Cat trees also usually come with scratchers on the posts. They even have scratcher beds. 
Vertical standalone scratchers must have a heavy bottom and not tip over. It can just take one time of a scratcher crashing to the ground to create a fear and resistance to using the scratcher. You can cover scratchers in catnip to encourage your kitty to use it or use a wand toy to guide them to it. Now you should have a variety of toys for your cat. You want ball toys, plush toys, wand toys, bigger interactive toys, and of course catnip. I highly suggest investing in a water fountain for your cat. The number one issues many cats face are related to urinary function. So kidney disease, urinary tract infections, crystals, blockages, etc. Drinking water just doesn't come as naturally to cats for a few reasons. Cats love moving water because it means it's clean and not stagnant. Also, cats don't really see well up close. Fountains encourage cats to drink plenty of water, which is important for overall health. There are just a few options. You have plastic ones that are a bit more affordable, ceramic ones, glass ones, and stainless steel. You must refill the fountains daily, and I would fully clean them out at least once a week. So let's talk treats. With the hundreds of cats that I have worked with, the one treat that most cats like is Temptations. This is not sponsored, but Temptations, if you want to, hit me up. I love your products. I have had some success with Greenies and these Meow Mix Soft Chews. Fancy Feast makes these cute little pouches with a tiny amount of tuna, which is helpful instead of opening a whole can and having it go bad. Also, you don't want your cat to eat a lot of tuna, but just a little bit is really great for socialization. Churu is a lickable treat and baby food is also a nice option. The baby food should only have one or two ingredients like pureed chicken and water. Treats can be a wonderful enrichment activity and you can also use a tiny Kong and put wet food in there, baby food, or even churu. And also treat balls, which you can fill with treats when you leave, which keep your cat occupied and entertained. Some additional enrichment like TV or music can be really rewarding. There are a bunch of cat music and entertainment videos on YouTube, even CDs. Playing movies that are calm and happy can help desensitize cats to human voices. Disney movies, cartoons, or generally happy movies are great. The green cube that's pictured is a music box specifically designed for cats made by a company called Pet Acoustics. I have had a lot of success with these, but they are a little pricey. You can buy them direct from the company or from Amazon. Just make sure the music or TV isn't too loud and is more like background noise. You can choose to play music and movies at specific times or throughout the day, but at night cats should be given the opportunity to have complete silence. These resources are going to be your main tool for socializing your cat, for building that trust and building that connection. So don't skimp you guys, have a variety of things for your cat available. Step two is giving your cat some time to decompress and getting them on a schedule. Cats need time to adjust to a new environment without you being all up in their business on day one. Remember, your cat doesn't really know you and doesn't know your home. Even though you may already love your new cat, that feeling may not be immediately mutual and we can't force it. So giving your kitty a couple days to just decompress is great. So just saying a quick hi with some slow blinks, giving them treats or wet food without invading their space or having big expectations is the perfect way to slowly introduce yourself as a non-threatening person. If you've never heard of the slow blinks, you should stop everything and try it with your cat. You wanna look at your cat, slowly blink your eyes closed, hold them closed for a little bit, and then slowly open them. This is a way that you can tell your cat that you are a non-threatening person. And what's really awesome is a lot of times they give you those slow blinks back. It's a way to communicate with your cat and it's really awesome, so you should try it. Next, you wanna get them on a routine or schedule. When a cat is able to predict their day, when they will be fed, played with, given treats, etc., it lowers their stress and anxiety greatly. Figure out what works best with your lifestyle and do your best to be consistent. Here are some basic feeding guidelines. Cats should have free access to dry food all the time or fed throughout the day in small portions. 
a portion of wet food in the morning and at night and treats about one to three times a day. Now this really depends on your cat and their needs. If your cat is prone to gaining weight, then obviously you wanna restrict food, but cats should be eating many small meals throughout the day. Kittens should have specific kitten dry food and wet food. Since their bodies and brains are still growing, they should be able to eat as much as they want. You want the best quality food within your budget, one that is high in protein and low in carbs. To figure out the best options for you, check out my other video about figuring out how much protein is in cat food. Here are just some examples of schedules for you and your cat. Obviously, for people who work full time, some of the midday activities just may not be possible. But this is why music or TV is so wonderful because you can play it all day while you are out. Treat balls and Kongs are great because you can fill them up before you leave and then leave them out for your cat. Playing with your cat is super important once they are comfortable and should absolutely be a part of their daily routine. Step three is socializing. You wanna socialize your new cat around the same time every day. Again, predictability of daily routine lessens stress and anxiety. Two times a day should be the minimum. And a session can be 10 to 20 minutes long depending on your cat's comfort level. I always start trying to engage a new cat in play with a string toy. The string toy is great because it creates a little bit of distance between you and the cat, which makes the cat feel safer. You are simply meeting the cat where they are at, getting on their level and sitting sideways to them. You don't want to face them head on as that can be in a very aggressive stance. So sit sideways, go really slow and try to engage them with the toy and assess the reaction. Are they trying to catch the toy or maybe they're just following the toy with their eyes? These are all great. If the toy seems frightening to them, immediately try something else, maybe like treats. If they don't like treats, then try pairing yourself with their wet food. If none of those things work, you can simply just sit quietly with them or even read a book to them. You can also meditate or do another quiet activity where you are just spending time with them without any expectations. You can try maybe brushing them, but only if they really like it, or you can even try a little catnip. I cannot stress enough how important consent is to cats and all animals. When you force yourself onto a cat, force them out of hiding, force hold them, or push them past their limits, you will only teach your cat that you cannot be trusted. Giving your cat choices and control will give them the confidence they need to be happy and healthy in your home. What you are doing during these socialization sessions is you're pairing yourself with super fun, positive, and yummy things. You want your cat to associate only positive things with you. So you should never ever at any time reprimand your cat, yell at them, or force them to do anything. You want your cat to love and trust you. Building that bond takes time. One of the biggest mistakes people make with cats is that they force them to do things. So you should never pick up your new cat. You should never forcefully hold them or manipulate their bodies to do what you want. Even if you gently pick your cat up, you are doing something they are not able to consent to. I teach all my staff and volunteers how important consent is for cats. You need to be predictable with your movements and actions. Predictability helps the cat relax and know what to expect. Imagine if some giant creature just walked up to you at random times of the day and picked you up and held you. And you hated it, but you didn't speak their language, so you couldn't say no. But what cats will do is they'll scratch you, they'll bite you, and they will fear you. If you wanna have a respectful and positive relationship with your cat, allow them to have control over their own bodies and environment. Another thing to try is to scent swap. Once the cat has been in their safe room for several days, begin adding new blankets and other items from other parts of your home into their room and take one item from the safe room and put that item in another place in the home. You don't wanna take away the cat's favorite scent items, obviously. Your goal is to simply add your cat's scent to other parts of the house as well as introduce different house scents to your kitty. Step four 
is opening up the door to the safe room. But ask yourself, is your cat ready? Are they still hiding? Are they still super fearful? Don't rush this step. It's okay wherever they are at, but some things to look for to know if your cat is ready. When you walk into the room, does your cat come out to see you? Is their tail up high? Is their body upright versus cowered down? Are their ears straight up and not down and to the side or back? Are their pupils restricted or huge and dilated? You want your cat walking around the room confidently before you open that door. What you don't want is to open the door and the cat takes off and hides somewhere. You either cannot find them or access them. Then it's a whole stressful ordeal trying to get them back into the safe room. So don't open the door if they're not ready. You can make your entire house a little bit smaller by closing off all the other doors. So before you open the safe room door, if your cat is ready, go around your house and close all the other doors, bedroom doors, bathroom doors, laundry room doors. That's gonna make the space a little bit smaller and more manageable for them. You also wanna look around for those inappropriate hide places like you did for the safe room and block those off. What you're doing is you're just slowly introducing a bigger space, your house, to your cat. A lot of times the big space can be really overwhelming for a new cat. So you wanna slowly introduce the space so it's not super overwhelming. It also can be done in really short sessions. So you can open the door for just five minutes and maybe they go out and then they just go back into their safe room. And that's okay, that's great, right? Or maybe you open the door to the safe room and they walk around the house and they're super confident and they're laying out in the open and they're sleeping and you don't really need to put them back in the safe room. Also, please remember, you're just opening the door. So you're not opening the door and then grabbing the cat and throwing them into the house or even trying to lure them out of the safe room. All you're doing is you're opening the door and inviting them to explore a new space if they want to. Also realize you don't have to hang around. You don't have to like lurk and, and watch them. You can just open the door and go about your business, right? You can even do it at night. So before you go to bed, you open the door and let them explore on their own. Just remember, this needs to be a really positive experience. So don't feel overly stressed. And of course, don't reprimand your cat if they're exploring a space or maybe they jump on the counter or they do something that you don't want them to do. Oh, good Lord, just let them do what they want and you can work on all of those rules later. But maybe your cat just isn't ready. Are their pupils really big? Are their ears down? Is their tail down? Are they cowering or slinking around? They aren't ready and that's okay. So take it slow and remember, just don't force it. Step five is introducing the whole house. If your cat has done really well with having the door open and investigating other parts of the house, begin opening up the doors and allowing them to see the whole house. They may still love their safe room, so I would suggest leaving their resources in there, their litter box, food, water, toys, etc. But if they begin spending more time in other parts of the house, you may consider moving some resources. It's always nice to have two litter boxes for a cat in two separate locations. And this is your gentle reminder to just be calm and relax. You need to be confident because you want your cat to be confident. So if you're feeling really nervous or anxious, your cat is absolutely gonna feel that energy. So take a deep breath, trust the process, trust yourself, and know that you are doing your best and that building this relationship is super important. It will all work out and you got this. Thank you so much for watching. If you follow this protocol, I know you and your cat will greatly benefit. Thank you again so much for choosing a shy cat. I cannot tell you how rewarding it is when you earn the trust of a cat that has been betrayed or maybe abused or just has suffered some sort of trauma. These cats deserve loving homes. So thank you so much for welcoming a shy cat into your home. Now let's keep cats wild at heart. Let's enable them to feel safe, confident, and secure. And let's provide the best and most harmonious home possible. Please like, share, and subscribe.